Have you ever been to a pride parade? I think I've been to five. I hadn't gone to one in a while because I'm allergic to the sun, but Chelsea, her artist friend Caitlin, and myself got our extremely ta translucent fair skin lubed up with sunscreen and hit the art district in downtown Columbus, and it was a great time. If you're watching this, you've probably already seen the Pride Parade and Creepypasta analyzing video Chelsea and I did. We're about to show you the Creepypasta analysis we did right after the parade with Caitlin, but first, a history lesson. The first Pride Parade march in Columbus, Ohio was held in June of 1981. Only 200 people were in attendance and some even wore bags over their heads to conceal their identities. This year was the 37th Pride Parade held in Columbus. In 2007, we, there, were, ah, there were over 215 unique marching contingents uh, representing a vast array of nonprofits, community organizations, corporate sponsorships, small businesses, political candidates, and activists. Over 1,200 people marched in the parade, and an over and an estimated uh, 500,000 attended Pride. That's from the website. But here's something personal: we saw different political candidates fighting for the LGBTQ vote in the parade. And that's how it should be. Everyone vying for that contingency. Um, that fear that caused people to wear bags over their heads is dying out, and I think that's cool. All right. Oh man, this is my show, and I gotta be energy. Oof. Oh, you need to do okay jacks? Yeah. There's an energy drink in there. Oh, I've had enough energy drinks for one life for today. Oh man, uh, Red Bull ladies are as full of Red Bull as they are full of pep. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, they're full of pep because they're full of Red Bull. Uh, yeah, I wonder how much they sample in their own stuff. I don't know. Uh, any good dealer knows they don't sample their own stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we got a bunch of chips today, so I tried to search up creepypasta and chips, and then this blueberry story was the first thing that came up. Okay. So that's what we're reading. So that's why we're reading this. Uh, everyone knows me, I'm Dead Palette, and you are? I'm Chelsea Comer, aka CF Comer. And I'm Kate Griffith, aka K -M uh, KG Mozart, spelled M-O-T-E-S-A-R-T. And uh, you can find, you're mostly on Instagram, aren't you? Me? Yeah. yeah. I'm mostly on Instagram, but I have everything synced up, so it, it looks like I'm active on other, me <laughs> other media, but really I'm not. <laughs> Uh, let's get let's get right into this one before I fall asleep. We'll just go right. paragraph by paragraph, and I'll start us off. Um, he smashed the dark oak desk into shards of stray wood strewn about the chamber with his sledgehammer. He couldn't eat the whole thing in one bite. What is happening? I don't know yet. Okay. As the veins in his eyes pulsed and his teeth ground for individual superiority over the others. He tried to think of something that didn't involve what the guard outside the heavy door was going to watch him eat through the bullet bulletproof glass. Okay, so someone is behind bulletproof glass and they're... Eating a desk? Eating I mean, desk. we were talking about that earlier. It was just, you can eat just about anything if you put your mind to it. Yeah, you, yeah. Just, you gotta think about it. So, what was it? Blueberries. They're nice. I remember blueberries. The best ones came from the big bushes outside the McCoy house in Michigan. I'm going to eat a desk for a crime I didn't commit. Blueberries. Okay. Okay. Well, I have no idea what's happening so far. Apparently we're in a universe where if you commit a crime, you have to eat something. A desk. <laughs> oh, this guy just is, is the punishment. Is the punishment eating a desk? Is, is, is For a crime I didn't commit blueberries. Blueberries, they're nice. I remember blueberries... I'm going to eat a desk for a crime I didn't commit. Blueberries, that's okay. Uh, I think that this story's probably driving at something that we're just not supposed to get yet. Right. By the way, we're all like decked out and sweaty in pride gear. Yeah, just came from pride. Jangle, jangle, got Ooh. cricket mobile, and what, what else am I advertising? Uh, I probably got a church or two. Cover my meds, Ohio Food Bank. Bank churches, church banks. I think I got this from the Express, Express um, 
float, but it doesn't say express, so uh, I'm happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this though, says crooked on it, but as I found out when I was taking it off, reversible into red, white, what? and blue. Oh, snap. So not only did they give you a pride one, they gave you a 4th of July one. Yeah, there you go. Hey. Uh, you get two holidays in one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there we go. Uh, it is now drenched in my sweat. Man, that entire street is just drenched in sweat. I mean, that's that's why after the parade and I mean that amount of sweat. That's why after the parade they had to have like three street cleaners yeah. in a row. Yeah, they had, they had like through. what a row, four street cleaners going up and down both sides of the right. street. <laughs> I really wish that the. Uh, Gotta scrape the scum off the sidewalk, right? <laughs> Gotta scrape up all of the the homosexuality and sin. Off yeah, the... you gotta scrape the sin, the sin <laughs> residue off the roads. But it's funny because like we we were talking, we really wish that the street cleaners were at the end of the parade to tell you it was over, and then just like slap a few like pride stickers on there, yeah. a few rainbows, and you're good to go. Um, Wait, hold on. I'm reading ahead a, l- a little bit, and suddenly it just occurred to me, he's locked up. Yeah, behind bulletproof glass, and they have provided him with a hammer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, that was that was earlier. He smashed the dark oak wood into shards. Yeah. It, like but it suddenly sledgehammer. just dawned. It just sl- suddenly dawned on me. This man who is in prison has a weapon. Yeah, right? a sledgehammer. But it's bulletproof glass. I'm I'm sure with I enough, mean, enough force, determination like, <laughs> at that point they could probably have stopped him. Okay, so he has a sledgehammer. Is he Triple H? This, this that's the real question here. <laughs> uh, Secretly, Hunter Hearst Helmley. Yes. Uh, he laid his hammer down, sat on the floor, or or uh, uh, what's his name, John Henry? Yeah, John Henry. John Henry. <laughs> he he got locked up for you know beating that machine, man. The only one I really know is Chris Benoit. But uh, yeah, we all know Chris, Chris Benoit for a reason. Stop making stuff I need to play. <laughs> I'm not bleeping Chris Benoit. Uh, <laughs> he laid his hammer down, sat on the floor, and stared for a few minutes at the wall. He eventually picked up a dime size chip of wood. That's why a chip came up when I touched it. He held his nose and opened his mouth wide. This is a blueberry. This is a McCoy blueberry. They'd always be happy to give me their blueberries, and this is one of them. As he There are many me, blueberries. This one is mine. <laughs> Man, you like it, but this one is mine. Right. As he swallowed whole, he gagged as he felt the edges of the chip cut the lining of his throat. He forced it into his stomach. The back of his mouth became sour with little drops of blood. Okay. So this guy is just, like, ultra-determined. So is the twist going to be that this guy isn't insane, it's the people somehow outside of the jail cell that are the insane ones? I don't know. So the lunatics are running the asylum type of deal. I don't know. Some of the ways some of this is written is just kind of weird to me. Like, forced it into his stomach. And then earlier, with uh, each of his teeth, we're fighting for superiority. It, it, I, don't, I like that like, phrasing. It's something about it just like makes me imagine just all of his teeth, teeth just beating, fighting, yeah, each other. beating each other up. up. It kind of it like, kind of makes me think of like a pig with crooked teeth. Yeah, it's very visual. I like it. Mm-hmm. It is very visual. It um, just it strikes me as a little strange. Uh, that was a blueberry, very sweet blueberry. Picked it at just the right time, properly left it. He, uh, where are we? He choked down more chips. Okay, was... He choked down more chips. More blood came up, and nausea set in from the wood and its varnish. He couldn't throw up. Then he would have to start over. So, so are we gonna are we gonna say that this is some sort of self imposed punishment, or that, like we said earlier, they're making yeah. him eat the? <laughs> I mean, if it was self imposed, I don't think he would be behind bulletproof glass. Bulletproof glass, or well, I mean, he could still be in the cell, right? And just suddenly decide, I'm going to eat my desk. Right. But why does he have a wooden desk, A? And why does he have a sledgehammer, B? Right. Well, to be fair, it's all about the game and how you play it. All about control and if you can take it. (laughs) (laughs) Um... You did choke more down. Yeah, it's like he got chipped in his feet. Okay. 
He got to his feet and raised the sledgehammer high above his head to make more of these to make more of these pieces out of the bigger ones. I love blueberries. I'm going to eat a lot of blueberries. Uh, it's also kind of unclear how he's saying this, whether he's saying this like a deranged madman or whether he's Yeah, because being... we don't really have much in the way of like a state of mind for the character at this right. point. We you, could assume he's completely out of his mind. You don't know if he's like looking through the glass, like trying to make some sort of like statement to the people who imprisoned him of like, I'm going to eat these, like very angry, like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, right. it's like with sarcasm, you don't know right. how he's saying it. Um, the door flung open and before he could say anything, the guard took his sledgehammer and slammed the door. Well, it looks like I'm going to be eating big blueberries. He sat on the floor and grabbed a foot-long length of splintered oak. He tried to break it, but it would only break in half. He pointed his face at the fluorescent light on the ceiling and opened his mouth wide. This is a blueberry. I know it looks nothing like a blueberry, but it is. I'm a sword swallower. I can eat a sword. <laughs> a sword made out of blueberries. He nudged the wood past the opening of his throat. He felt it scrape. He felt it slide gently, gently, gently. Uh, okay. He's like eating a ruler, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, this a broken one. Oh. Uh, this is a blueberry. It doesn't taste like one, but it probably is. He felt his mouth water, and in doing so, he gagged. He couldn't breathe. He tried to pull the wood out of his throat, but the edges were caught in the inside of him. Okay. Uh, with a long scream saturated by his torn throat, he ripped the stick out and threw it to the outside of the chamber. His mouth was a fountain of saliva and blood. His esophagus might as well have been on fire with pain. He turned his head and saw a sturdy board that made the surface of the desk. He only split it in half with his hammer. That is no blueberry. Really? Um, and that's... That's the end. end. That's the end. I... I... Okay, I don't know what to make of this. Because they had, they had the sense to come in and stop him from smashing the desk. Why did he have the hammer in the first place? Because they clearly didn't give it to him to use it in this way. What was he being punished for? I don't... I mean, we got his, his job title, but, like, we didn't get what punishment he got. Or, we got his punishment, we didn't get what he was being punished for. Yes, it's... this is... It, I don't know, I was enjoying this. I thought maybe this was going somewhere, but it looks like it's, it's not. It's kind of just like a, a little thicklet. Type of deal. Yeah, I, I, and there was like a sort of an arc to it, but it kind of trailed off into that I needed, I don't need every answer, you don't, but there there just wasn't enough of any kind of explanation here. Yeah, right. Um, there's, plenty, there's plenty of like suspense and like kind of fear that you can create with ambiguity, but this wasn't that. Right. Like, I need to know why he has a sledgehammer. Uh, I don't need to know why there's a desk there, but I need to know why there's a sledgehammer there. I feel like I should know what his crime is. Is this something that we're not getting because we don't know about, like, another McCoy blueberries? Is there something, is there another story attached to this? That right, is it like maybe the second in a series? McCoy... Blue... It's not auto-completing. So I'm, I don't know. All I'm getting, <laughs> when I type in McCoy blueberries, I get the first thing that comes up on Bing uh, is roasted blueberry serrano margarita mix. Nice. Burns and McCoy sauce company. And then the second one is this story. So... Um, I see uh, in the wiki five video game tropes that need to die already. And why Studio Ghibli's Princess Mononoke is better than Spirited Away. So, I'm, I'm scrolling down to see if there's any sort of attached article. And I'm just getting, uh, big ol', big ol' advertisements for yeah. unrelated. Well, yeah, that's part of fandom. Fandom loves giving you those advertisements. Um, we have a comment from Levi Salvos. 
I like how this didn't try and make some big twist. It just explained what's happening as it happened. Odd little story, but I like it. Yeah, it 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 didn't shoot. It doesn't need to have a big twist. It does kind of have like a good zinger ending, but again, there's just things that are ambiguous that I don't understand why they would be ambiguous, why they wouldn't give us that, why they wouldn't tell us how his tone of speech is. Yeah, because we really only get one character. I mean, we could even interpret that as like the, the ending is not like a like a ooh that's he's realizing like it can just be interpreted as like black humor like that's not a blueberry yeah it's not even clear if he's saying it it could be like i should i should know who's saying that is it like the guard or guards or i don't know yeah um uh the languiscent gamer i don't know i uh, that's languiscent Languiscent. I, I'm, I'm guessing that's how you say that word. We're looking at in the comments. Yeah. Uh, it felt kind of strange how you start every paragraph with, start every sentence with a new paragraph. It was very annoying. Uh, a little bit. I, I just wish that there was. Uh, yeah. This left a little to be desired. Yeah, it did. Um, I think McCoy Blueberry uh, just references the name. Here's of the, the here's that's growing them. Yeah. Here's a, here's just an interesting uh, comment I, I found from Folding Chair SA because they clearly understood it better than we did. Mm. Okay. Ah, insanity is it is to the creepy pasta what non Euclidean geometry is to the Lovecraftian horror. It's the glue that holds together the weird category, and that's why I love it so much. This pasta is really strange, but it is very cohesive as the reader always seems to know what's going on. Though I do wonder why the guard wasn't doing anything the entire time after he took the hammer away. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Is you just have those kinds of questions? I, I would disagree. I, I strongly disagree with this being yeah. just simply, you know, the glue that holds the weird category together. Well, there's there's tons of stories out there that are weird and don't have a like have a satisfyingly unsatisfying ending. But mm. I just don't think there was. It, this wasn't even that. No. Because no. we didn't know anything that was going on, and no, it was not cohesive. Yeah, we have one character in it, and we don't really know anything about that character, and that is and it's kind of it. driven by that character. So yeah, I mean, yeah. You can keep reading that comment if you want. Let's see. Um, probably just awestruck that he's watching a man eat a desk while muttering to, to himself how much he loves blueberries. I also like the little attention to detail that they give about the pain he is enduring. Ad adjectives like sour blood really bring a very tactile feeling and give pasta give the pasta texture, for lack of a better word. That's that last I, part. It, I think is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. he's, he's he's onto something there that the that they. It's not inherently terribly written. It's just not put together well. It's. It has no. I think. It, I think it's put together well. It just doesn't have a plot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I guess you could take it for what it is. I. I didn't get much out of it, but yeah. Fair. Fair enough. Story. Uh, do we have anything else to say about this one? No. Um, Knuckle Bump Five Five Seven says, "What the fuck." That sums it up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree, knuckle bump. Just spot on. Yeah, give, give us your explanation for what's happening in the comments, because I don't think the author knew either. Uh, where can people find you guys? I am mostly on Instagram as KG Mozart. Again, spelled M O T E S A R T. Uh, my middle name is Moats, so. <laughs> <laughs> You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, um, something else I'm forgetting, but whatever. Uh, C.F. Comer. Yeah, Deviator. I'm just that under <laughs> various versions of C.F. Comer. Pretty easy to find. Uh, once you see titties, you have found me. Uh, yeah. This is, see you. Bye. Bye. See, see you in the future. Bye. <laughs> That was certainly, um, hmm. Yeah.